Hi friends, strangers, internet. My name is Emily Hanhan and today we are here for new makeup nonsense. Cheers to that. So what's going on? What, what's all this about? New Makeup Nonsense is a new series that I am launching with the lovely, amazing, uses fucks as, a, as commas, Teresa is dead. There's also a bonkers storm happening outside, but I'm going to try to keep this short. Teresa is one of those people that inspired me to start my channel. Straight up just seeing somebody who put their full opinion out there, was a damn good storyteller, was a fat woman who uses fuck as a comma. All of those things, I was like, okay, okay. I'm not Teresa, but I can do this. So I've been really, really fortunate to actually become friends with her, like in real life. We happen to live in the same city. I seriously just feel very fortunate to have become friends with her and Alex her husband if you don't know who Teresa is I mean if you don't know who Teresa is like stop right now like go go look at her channel do not pass go do not collect $200 just go so basically we met up for ramen a couple weeks ago and we were talking and having only done this this YouTube thing for a couple months, I've learned that it's really helpful to be able to talk things out with other people. Somehow during the course of lunch, I kind of came up with the bingo idea and she added on to it and we were like, oh shit, this is a really cool idea. Like we should do this. And it can be recurring, it's interesting, it's fun, blah, 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 blah. So the concept is that there are bingo cards that are full of cliche, recurring, annoying, fun makeup themes that keep happening with releases. We have a mix of images that we've pulled. We are randomly going to pick images from that list. And if they are on the bingo card, we're gonna take a drink and we're gonna mark it on the card. Theoretically, we are going to play the game until we have bingo. And in my opinion, the most fun part of this is that it's gonna be different every time you play with every set of releases and and you all can join in and play your own bingo game and you know post it as a video or share your your shenanigans on instagram whatever it might be oh before we get started in the description bar there will be a link to the bingo cards there's five varieties they all have the same squares the squares are just jumbled up for me and Teresa because we're talking about the same things we won't have the same experience with bingo if it's not obvious as well, part of this whole thing is that we will tell our thoughts. It's not just a drinking game. It's like you're, will I buy it, but boozed up. So, so the first item that came up in my random selection are these new ColourPop bomb crayon things that they are selling in trios and I think singles. The free square on every card is, it's a ColourPop release, so we're starting there but i have to say it's interesting to see this trend of these bomb crayons come back around right as revlon seems to be discontinuing their old bomb crayon things colourpop is releasing these if i was putting an order with colourpop i would definitely put one of these in my cart i used to love this kind of formula i think it's a great addition to their to their line for me i don't really like color glosses but i do enjoy a balmy formula with color in it so of the swaths swaths of color pop releases that are happening and continue to happen i'm not mad at this i might not be mad but i still have to take a drink This is a carbonated rosé, so already getting burpy. So next product up in my list is the new Maybelline Superstay Concealers. This release does actually intrigue me because it's in the same kind of packaging that the Milk Makeup Concealer is in that people tend to like. It's a doe foot, but it's also a squeezy tube. Because it's Maybelline, it's a big brand with all kinds of capabilities to do a bigger 
concealer release in 12 shades with obvious market knowledge about what sells. I'm gonna have to give this the shitty complexion bingo square because they're a big brand that can do more than 12 colors in a first release. They definitely can do better. And so we have two drinks in a row. Oh, uh, the next one up. The next uh, one up. Might as well take a drink. Ooh. So the next is Tarte and this collaboration with Whitney Simmons. Something told me that the universe was going to give this one to me in my randomly assorted list. So I looked up who the hell this, this person was. She seems to be some kind of fitness person who has put together one of the most boring Tarte palettes. Here's the thing. In the scheme of whatever this person's brand is, I could theoretically see this palette making sense. If you are going to work out and you need to throw something on your face afterwards, it looks like you have a blush and you have a highlighter and you have some neutral shadows. But those exist. They're out there. There are other ideas out there that you could play around with related to fitness and active wear and makeup. And this is just, I haven't purchased a lot of the new colorful palettes from Tarte because I don't know if I'm gonna really get along with their with their formulas. But it was like kind of refreshing to see like, oh, Tarte is going in a different direction and that's cool. They're trying, they're hearing the criticism and they're trying. <sighs> Seeing this collab just makes me say like, yeah, no, the root of the, the Tarte brand is still there. It's boring and it's neutral and the quality is, in my opinion, questionable. So that's that. So I'm gonna make this one quick. This is some brand called Makeup A Murder that I've never heard of that has a palette coming out with packaging themed around crime, crime scene tape. It doesn't fall on the bingo card anywhere, so we get a little break from the wine. But I'm curious, I will say. I just recently started watching Bailey Sarian and I watched Paulina Beauty and her Makeup and Murder uh, series. And I listen to a lot of true crime prod podcasts. I have for a couple years now. I'm, the the YouTube format, the, the Makeup and Murder thing, I'm cool with, I enjoy. As a makeup theme, I'm cautiously curious. It might be super cool, it might be terrible. The next one up on my, my list is the Pat McGrath Complexion Launch. And this is another one that happens to skip the bingo card because here's the thing. Pat McGrath has put together, in my opinion, a pretty wide shade range. And it's a satin buildable coverage foundation. She has, I think, concealer and powder coming too. But that alone, I'm happy to see. Say what you will about Pat McGrath. I bought one of her palettes. I was kind of middle of the road on it. Didn't love it, didn't hate it. But her venturing into complexion definitely has my, my little feelers up and like, I am curious to see what people have to say about it. So just another release. I'm not gonna go buy a really expensive foundation. Down the road, I might buy a really expensive concealer if it's getting the kind of reviews that I wanna see. I might, or even a powder. Not there right now, but I could down the road see myself spending too much money on those kinds of things. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, holiday releases. Holiday sneak peeks are already here. I, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm annoyed and surprised. So the next one I have up is Charlotte Tilbury and some of our holiday sneak peeks. We're seeing another full face eye palette. We're seeing a highlighter with a very Estee Lauder feeling impression on it. Um, some other bronze and glow or something in that vein and a palette. Her, her holiday palette last year, the long slender one with similar packaging. If I didn't already own way more eyeshadows than I ever needed, and I was in that price point, I would buy that Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette. I am feeling Samantha Ravindal levels of sweaty dewy right now. So 
this Charlotte Tilbury palette. We have a section on the bingo card that is a half neutral, half colorful palette. For, them. for me, I don't think of that palette as half neutral, half colorful. But for the Charlotte Tilbury market that's out there, for her audience, I think that reads as a as a 2019 take on the half colorful, half neutral palette. So I'm going to give it a square on the bingo board. So the next item up is the Climax palette from the Cosmic Apex brand. No, the Cosmetic Apex brand. This palette is so... Mm, 2016 2017 it's always hard for me when I see a brand that's new to me release something that is older to market because it's definitely possible that this brand doesn't have any other warm neutral palettes in their in their um, brand and it's new to them but when I see it I just think does anybody need that right now and if you're looking at new or new to you indie brands, you're probably not going to throw down money on their warm neutral palette as a first investment. I do not have any, oh, it's another warm neutral palette spot on there. So there's no drinking right now, but I'll just say that I'm always happy to hear about any brands new to me, but this release just, seems uninspired. My, my lovely cat decided to knock over my phone as it was recording. So after that warm neutral palette, we're moving on to Love Lux Beauty and their new Sparks. These, from what I can tell, just look like loose glitters. Um, I'm not into loose glitters and loose pigments, generally speaking. And maybe it's just the the image, but none of these look, they don't look like they're multi-chrome. Some of them look duochrome. They look glittery, but they're just not, the promo image is not enough to make me want to make a purchase. So we're just gonna keep it moving. And next up we have a little bougie something and I, I pulled this image all for, for Miss Teresa because I know she is a complete whore for Tatcha. And I will say this Silk Peony Melting Eye Cream, the name alone, it does intrigue me. It does make me, you know, do a second look. When I work my way through all of my backlog of skincare samples and things that I purchased, I still haven't tried Tatcha and I would make them one of my next purchases. So not right now. And I don't know if I'll come back to that product in particular, but I'm looking at you, Tatcha. I'm watching you. We're back. So we're bouncing from bougie high-end Tatcha to adorable indie Kraken Cosmetics. So Kraken Cosmetics is re-releasing their Notice Me Senpai palette. I don't know anything about this brand, so I don't know if this would qualify in my, like, is it limited edition or limited edition? I'm gonna let this one slide because the little that I read about it makes it seem like maybe they reformulated it or it's not one of those like super hyped up things that I heard about and then sold out and is coming back now. So. I'm gonna give it a pass. Perhaps the super cute packaging is making me a little bit less intense in judgment. The color story doesn't really do much for me, so I'm not interested in that way, but it's cute. So the next release is the second round of Stacey Marie collaborating with Be Perfect. Why did you have to do an even bigger palette than last time? Why? It's also basically just a rainbow palette. Yeah, you know, it's 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 a more diversified rainbow palette. I <sighs> Yeah, I mean, does this scream carnival like the theme maybe maybe a little bit? But 
just such an oversized palette. Not for me. Two in a row, we have releases that are just easy for me to keep my money away from. And they have spots on the bingo card. So the next release up is the newest Morphe palette that's gigantic and half neutral, half blue tone. I don't even know the name of it. I don't feel like looking it up. <sighs> I just don't reach for big palettes. And I don't need something that's half warm browns and half blues. I have tons of beautiful blues and blue palettes. And I have some good neutrals already in my collection that I'm super happy with. So it just, it's not for me, but a drink is for me. Oh, yay. Makeup Revolution is doing food themed makeup. One, we do have a food themed palette on the bingo board. So there's that. I get closer to a possible bingo and I also get drunker. So Makeup Revolution has these eyeshadow palettes and some face products that are coming out with the food theme. Um, on the screen, in the picture I have, I don't have the face products, but I know they're all kind of fruit themed. Those are pretty cute. I, I'm gonna give them that. And these eyeshadow palettes, the packaging is, is, is cute, but less obnoxious than say a whole pizza or a burger or, a, or ice cream sundae. I know it's kind of silly, but I feel like if the pizza palette had been like a pumpkin palette or I don't know, a corn palette, then all the eye palettes would be like savory vegetables and all the face products would be fruit. It kind of goes more together or the avocado and the chili pepper should have been like another kind of food that's more of a composed food like a pizza i know i'm overthinking it but you know i work around food i like food i'm fat i like thinking about food makeup because i'm like if you're gonna do it just like do it well do it well but beyond all of that like bullshit talking i just don't really have any interest in diving into the makeup revolution eyeshadow formulas Another thing is just not for me. Hell, if you came out with a, a rectangular compact with a pizza slice on it that was just mirrors, I'd probably give you my money. But they So my my random generator decides that, you know, it likes to pair the, the food shit together. So the next one up is this ice cream cone palette. So this is the Unique Beauty Summer Gelateria collection, which Props to you for picking a fancy word. And gelato is, is delightful. Unfortunately, whether or not you meant to be a copycat brand, you kind of are a copycat brand because that specific packaging has already been released. And I realize that you're an indie brand. And so you can't just like stop the presses and not release something that you've put probably put a lot of money and time into. It's just, it's unfortunate because the colors don't really speak to me personally. And I don't know that brand at all. I'm not gonna make my first purchase from them. An ice cream cone shaped palette with lots of empty space and colors that are not very inspiring. Oh wait, I almost forgot to drink. <sighs> Oh, so M Cosmetics, which is Michelle Fawn's makeup line, is releasing a new product. I gotta give her props because the packaging looks so nice, so pretty. It's a serum blush. If you're in that cream and liquid product life, good on you. I cannot do it, at least not stand alone. So while I'm totally swooning over that packaging, I've heard really fantastic things about the products that she has in her current line, which is very streamlined and small compared to that original tragic M Cosmetics first launch when I think she was with L'Oreal perhaps. Anyway, so this product looks gorgeous, just not for me. 
but you know, cool to see her line growing. I Unfortunately, we have two kind of boring things in a row, in my opinion. We have two more complexion launches. The first up is Dose of Colors. They are launching a foundation line. So the terminology that I'm seeing is a natural matte finish with high pigment. Is it technically a traditionally speaking matte full coverage foundation? It's not exactly what they're marketing themselves as, but I'm gonna give them the spot on the, on the bingo card because I do think that they're using the words matte and they're using the words high pigment. And to me, what they're trying to do here is they're trying to market a full coverage matte foundation with modern terminology. Hopefully it's also with modern technology in terms of the natural matte and the high pigment. To me, those are phrases that read like, hey, we are matte and we are full coverage, but we're doing it at a more refined level or a high, higher quality level than a Morphe style foundation or a Juvia's Play style foundation. Dose is one of those brands that they're just an indie brand that like, they're not really my aesthetic, but I am still rooting for them. They seem to be approaching the growth of a brand in a way that seems measured and thought. So we have yet another complexion launch. Although this one feels a little bit more cash grab heavy. This is Urban Decay with a Stay Naked line. I don't know if this is replacing their old line or if it's adding on to it. It just doesn't really interest me. It's another, they call it demi matte. It's another like, we're full coverage in matte, but we're, we're trying to market it as a more approachable, less heavy take on the idea. Whenever a brand, especially a larger scale brand, just kind of relaunches something, it always feels like a cash grab because it feels like you decided hey, the products that are on the shelf, they're not really moving. Let's just find a new way to spin it, invest in a little bit of new packaging and, and see what we can sell. In terms of a marketing side of things, cool, good job market, remarketing something. And some custom, some people are never gonna see that. They're never gonna see that side of it. And that's why I mentioned these kinds of things. And that's why I love these will I buy it anti haul style videos mentioning like hey that's the same shit you didn't want two weeks ago it's just a new packaging with a different name so you probably don't want it now don't let them fool you that's where i land right now on those things next up we have certify with their take on a warm neutral palette this is a certify affinity palette so I'm giving them a break because they're an indie brand, but I shouldn't do that because I didn't do that with another indie brand that I didn't know very well. This palette, this goes back to what I was saying before. Most people that will have heard of Certify, they have their warm neutral or neutral eyeshadows covered and they're really perhaps looking for something else or they're looking for neutral in a fresh and different way with textures and finishes that they haven't seen before. I don't see that in this palette. While this palette does have a touch of berries and pinks, which adds some nice dimension to it, and so it's not just a brown palette, it still doesn't feel so outside of the box or fresh or different, where if you're taking a chance on any brand that you would buy that palette. I'm kind of sad, because I feel like we have our ultimate catfish brand, Too Faced, but they're not on the bingo card. I lie. I lie because I'm giving them millennial pink packaging with this damn Palm Springs Dreams palette. So this palette has a millennial pink outside with accents of like a fuchsia magenta color and some gold. Am I giving Too Faced the spot because I'm tired of their bullshit? Yes. Everyone's seen these palettes. Everyone has palettes like this. They're neutral palettes with some shimmers. There's a dark blue. I could have given them neutral with a pop of blue, but even that blue isn't that inspiring. I don't know why I'm rooting for Too Faced so hard. Like, I want them to be better than they are. I think for a long time they were just a brand that was on my radar, but I didn't have the money or the access or whatever to buy them. Now that I 
could and would spend the money on them. Their eyeshadows are so, they're so inconsistent. This is another boring small neutral palette. But like you've done this, this palette a million times over guys. You've done it a million times over as some limited edition holiday release. And now you're bringing it out again. At least like pretend to do something new and inventive like the way Huda has done with her marbled powders that are, you just blend together and they turn into one shimmer. Like try to seem interesting and different. Just try it. Maybe. We got another, we got another bingo spot. This soul body brand that the, the folks that own ColourPop are coming out with. Really? You're creating a whole brand on body glow things? The, this kind of reminds me of when Tarte has come out with this Sugar Rush brand. Where I'm like, no, that's a line within your brand. This sole line, this is a line within your brand. Whether you put it under ColourPop or under Fourth Ray Skincare, this is, this is a line underneath them. This is not, to me, this is not comprehensive enough of a segment to build a whole brand for it. But as a whole line, to launch it in July, you, what, you missed, the core parts of summer. You're launching it in July. You could have launched it in April and caught the whole wave of spring and summer for the Northern Hemisphere. You launched it in July. Okay, sure. I mean, see beauty, you're the one making all the money. I'm not, so I'm probably wrong about all this, but it just seems like it's far too much to do over body glow. This brand is called Macar Macaria Beauty and they have a blue palette coming out. The palette is called Azulejo. So when I look at this palette, I say, I think that the packaging is quite nice. And I, th and I think the colors they picked out are pretty. I, I'm drawn to that light periwinkle color on the bottom row middle. I love a nine pan. I think it's a interesting color story. Unfortunately, it's a timing thing too, where while I haven't jumped on the blue green palette train so much, I think a lot of people that are into those colors or interested in exploring them have already kind of picked one, whether it's Certify or Ace Beauté or Menagerie or ColourPop. So for this, this brand in particular, I think they're just a touch too late, but I'll say what I've said before. I'm going to keep my eye on you. If it gets good reviews, I'm more interested in either purchasing that palette or more likely a, another palette from the brand. Speaking of another indie brand that's doing another nine pen palette that I think is pretty, but I think they might have missed their window is Glisten Cosmetics. They have this botany palette. I have to say shrub and mint. Ooh instantly interested in those but realistically none of the shimmers in there draw me in and I'm sorry I have my computer down here in case you see me staring down there a lot I do like the story they've created but it's not quite the green palette for me I think it's an interesting take on a more earthy green palette it's not in my bingo card of cliche ideas, which makes me a little happy because it's something a little different, but it's not the green palette for me. Oh, come on, complexion. I'm tired of you, complexion. Go away, complexion. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury foundation release. I, I thought Charlotte already did foundation, so I'm a little confused on that front. It's another one of those like, I think the color range looks looks okay, looks fine. And again, this is another holiday sneak peek. And I'm like, go home with your holiday sneak peeks, you're drunk. Another square in the bingo card that I totally missed out on. And that is mystery boxes. So we have the Jeffree Star Cosmetics mystery box. Now I'm in the process of, of editing a video featuring the color rain mystery box. I thought I was gonna have it up before this video, but 
summer is fucking me up right now. Um, <laughs> so I know mystery boxes are basically overstock. Things that are not selling, you're gonna put in a mystery box. But I think the thing with him, besides the fact that I'm not buying from his brand and I don't have plans to anytime soon, but the thing that bothered me the most when I would watch these videos from the holiday mystery boxes, cause I still watch them, especially if it's people that I love and support. Watching those videos, I realized like, you're sending the exact same boxes out. So it's not really a mystery. Every small box is the same products. Every medium box is the same products. Every large box, is the same products. For me, the idea of like a mystery box or like the lucky, the lucky bag from Beautylish, if I didn't have money to worry about, I would just buy like four of those and assume I'm gonna get an assortment of, of products, not the same thing four times over. So for me, like seeing him do more of these, if I had bought them before and I was a buyer from, of his brand, I feel like I would feel way too burnt to ever buy a mystery box from him again. So the next brand is just is another one that I just don't fuck with and that's Kylie and Kylie Skin. I'm gonna give this one the makeup brand making skincare kind of spot on the card. And while the second release looks like it's focused on skincare for your body more than your face, no, no, I'm not, I'm not giving you my money for, for body care or face skincare. No. I just realized I already marked it as a, as a makeup brand doing skincare, but I just looked back at the trend mood posting about it. And that's another brand that's doing a bundle. Oh, no one wants a bundle. Yeah. I might have to go on to trend mood and look at more brands because I'm running out of things that we pulled and don't have bingo yet. So the next one is another indie brand that I have not heard about. And it's kind of intriguing that of all the people that have posted about it, trend mood has. This is JC Cosmetics, I think is how you say it. And it's a big 35 pan, basically rainbow palette. This is more about the about the account that posted it and the than the brand. I could be totally, totally false about this, but anytime I see trend mood post about something, especially if it's not the specific mainstream big brands, I think that it's it's a paid for, like it's an advertisement. Anytime the way people that are at all familiar with beauty and beauty YouTube feel when Nikki Tutorials recommend something where it's like yeah, you're getting paid for that. And it's kind of how I feel because this is just a big rainbow colorful palette. And I just question how, how or why they were posted here. And this is not at all shade to the brand. This is more confusion. So the next release up is from Moira Cosmetics. This is three palettes under the fairy tale collections moniker these are three perfectly fine palettes to be honest the middle one is a neutral palette that i think we all have covered in our in our lives but i do like the soft muted tones of the top palette something about that kind of gives me a little bit of a nod back to like older stila palettes like the eyes are the windows of the soul or some of those older palettes pretty dusky tones so i'm not mad about it and then we have another Brights palette. That feels a little less inventive, but I think that's because the dusky tones just feel so fairy tale, pretty enchanted forest to me that I would have rather seen another palette in that same tone, but different colors, like more greens and something like that, rather than a Brights palette. This is the last one that we pulled and um, I don't have bingo yet. So this is the Sephora Favorites Clean Makeup Kit. I'm putting this under a bundle deal that nobody wants because while this is a kit and not a bundle, I feel like every time I look at these Sephora Favorite Kits, I'm drawn in. I'm always like, yeah, yeah, I want that. I like, I do like minis. I know that they're often a waste of money, but I like minis. 
nine out of 10 times, there's something in that kit that I'm just not at all interested in. And I'm sitting here debating like, do I get for the other six minis that I am interested in that are overpriced and I give away that, that seventh thing that I didn't want or do I just skip it? I don't know what it is about minis and little curated sets. They're just, they're so enticing. I think for me, minis are enticing because I feel like I can use that product up. But the reality is that I'm not gonna probably use up a mini lipstick, even if I think I am. And I have powders that I love and that I can use up a full size of. So I have plenty of things. I don't need a new kit. So right now, I don't have bingo, but I have about three spots that can get me bingo. We're just gonna go on to trend mood. You know what? <clears throat> you know what? BH Cosmetics. What the fuck BH Cosmetics? Why did you come up with this pretty brilliant idea of a bunch of mini palettes with a Zodiac theme, release one every month, and you're doing this? Why? I, I mean, golden -y shimmers for like lions, for Leos. Okay, fine. But even then, if you're gonna go with this like liony mustard golden thing, like go for it. Do some dirty mustard browns, like the bottom row of like the Midas Cosmetics or ColourPop Yellow palettes. Like, go for grungy mustardy golden colors. Instead, you're doing these mid-tone boring shimmers and a pop of blue. So I'm giving you the neutral with a pop of blue square because this shit is neutral and this is a pop of blue. If you had given me grungy tones, like warm, pukey browns, I wouldn't just excuse you as a plain neutral palette with a pop of blue because I think you're giving something with a little bit more diversity. But really it's unfortunate because it is a good idea so for yet another uninspired boring release i say thank you for getting me drunk and making me burp so that's that New releases, drinking rosé, sweating, talking shit. That's what we got today. So if you made it this far, thank you. If you're here from Teresa and you made it this far, like you're the MVP, you're the real star. Yeah, this was fun. And we're gonna do it again. If you drink along with me, cheers to you. I do palette bingos and chatty get ready with me's and other beauty related content. And I try to live my best, my best life on the internet and in real life. If you enjoyed this hot mess, I'd love for you to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. If you hated this and you never want to see it again, feel free to give me a thumbs down. And I'll say it again. If you aren't a subscriber of Teresa's, get your ass over to her channel and watch. If you don't like uh, fuck shit, damn, all those other four letter words, maybe you don't do that. But if you can handle that or enjoy that and you are not aware of Teresa, get yourself over to her channel and subscribe and again if you have found me because of Teresa thank you for watching if you have been here since I started thank you for sticking around and have a great day again thank you for spending some of your day with me hope to see you again real soon bye friends 
and cheers.